All right, time for exercise 37, AKA an exercise in fundamental theorem of calculus. So we have this proof and we're gonna start with the forward direction. Um, it's, a, it, it's slightly longer, but whatever. We'll get the hard part out of the way first. So for this, um, suppose that there exists an M such that F of X minus F of Y is less than or equal to m of x minus y for all x and y and r. Um, let epsilon be greater than zero. Um, okay, so then, uh, let's see here. We want to show that the absolute continuity epsilon delta de definition holds, and so if we we want to choose a delta that works and so if we choose delta between 0 and epsilon over m then for all let's see our a a1 b1 all the way up through a n b n of course uh you, you know what these are supposed to satisfy um they're all supposed to be in the closed interval from a to b and each ai is less than bi, but anyways, so if the sum from 1 to n of bn minus an is less than delta, then what does that mean? Then the sum from 1 to n of f of bn minus fan is less than or equal to sum from 1 to n of mbnan, which is less than m times epsilon over m, which turns out is epsilon. And uh, what does this, this mean surprisingly? This means precisely that f is absolutely continuous on, um, let's see here, this means that is absolutely continuous on all closed intervals a to b. I, mm, E F this is absolutely continuous on R. Next, um, we know by the fundamental theorem of calculus, um, aka theorem three point three five in Falland, um, that F is differentiable almost everywhere. And that we can apply now because we've already proven that it's absolutely continuous. Um, so for Lebesgue almost every x in, I can't quite fit it there, the real line, f prime of x is equal to, well, let's write this out, the limit as h goes to zero of fx plus h minus fx, this all norm, divided by h, and let's see here, this is norm, and then this is less than or equal to the limit as h goes to zero. Well, we apply our assumed estimate, and this just becomes, um, let's bring that back up, m times, uh, x plus h minus x, which is just h, and then this divided by h. And so that's just going to be the constant m. And that's exactly what we wanted. So now we do the reverse direction. For the reverse, suppose f is absolutely continuous um, on r and there exists an m such that f prime is less than or equal to m almost everywhere. So let x and y and r, um, let's say assume without loss of generality that x is less than or equal to y. Um, then f is absolutely continuous on 
x, y. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, the norm of f, y minus f, x is equal to the norm of the integral from, not from a to b, but from x to y of f prime t dt, and then less than or equal to, we bring the norms inside, norm f prime t dt, um, but this we know is less than or equal to the integral from, not from a to b, but from x to y of m dt, and this is just m of, this would be x minus y, and that's exactly what we wanted, and so this completes the proof. There is one more thing about this proof that I actually went back and decided to make a comment on, um, and that's that this is wrong, actually. I've made an error. Um, this So f is um, absolutely continuous on all a, b, i, e, f is absolutely continuous on r. That's not a true statement. You can be absolutely continuous on every particular closed interval a, b in r, but not be absolutely continuous on r. It's kind of like how you can be uniformly continuous on closed intervals, but not uniformly continuous on all of R. So, but that doesn't really matter because what we've done here has nothing to do with this A, B. I'm not quite sure why I was using this. So really, what this should say is, so F is absolutely continuous on R. That's exactly what we proved. And we didn't prove anything less than that, so it's fine to just erase everything that I wrote. The stuff that I added in was not only unnecessary, but it made the proof incorrect. So f is absolutely continuous on R, um, and everything else works out fine. Um, so then, like in the reverse direction, uh, this absolute continuity on x, y is a particular... Um, case um, that we can conclude based on the fact that it's absolutely continuous on R of R, all of R, which is strictly stronger than being absolutely continuous on any particular closed interval. So yeah, I just want to make that remark, and now we are done with the proof.